Today's video, we're going to be talking about cellular communication. So it's important that cells are able to communicate with each other to maintain a stable environment, to regulate their growth and division, and to organize the tissues and coordinate functions. So an example of cellular communication is with a signal molecule. So those signal molecules can be things like insulin. So they can be hormones, or they can be much smaller, smaller molecules. So the important thing that you need to understand is that we have a signaling cell which is going to release some form of molecule or a signal molecule and that signal molecule is going to reach a target cell and induce a response so there's different methods that we can have this form of cell communication either there'll be a uh, plasma membrane bound signaling signaling molecule so a receptor and this is going to induce a change in the cell once the signal molecule has bound onto the receptor. Another type is receptor proteins get inside the target cell, so the signal molecule has to pass through the plasma membrane and reach the receptor which is inside the cell, so it's an internal receptor. And another type is um, there are protein channels called gap junctions that directly coordinate the activities of the adjacent cells. Now, when we have problems with the cellular communication, this can allow for the onset of disease and disease progression. I've included some primary modes of intercellular signaling. So these are four types. We have juxtacrine or contact dependent signaling. We have paracrine signaling. We have synaptic signaling. And we also have endocrine signaling. Now, let's begin with the first one, juxtacrine signaling. So the cells are going to be transmitting a signal molecule via a membrane-bound signal molecule to receptors on target cells, but only if those cells are in direct contact. Now, if you look at this diagram here on the left, you can see here we have the signaling cell and the target cell, and they're actually in very close proximity. So it's able to allow for this signal to be uh, passed onto this receptor site by being in such close proximity, so it's literally just binding onto it even though uh, the signal molecule isn't moving so it's just bound onto this um, um, membrane here and our examples can be through uh, growth hormones cytokines and chemokines and juxtacrine signaling is very important in immune response Another type is paracrine signaling. So what happens is we have a signaling cell which is going to uh, release this signal molecule and it's going to be secreted out of the cell and the signaling molecule is either going to be absorbed, destroyed or immobilized but it is going to bind onto the target cell. So it's just going to travel in a local um, area so it's not going to travel very far and it's going to bind onto the receptors on the target cells. Now, it usually involves different types of cells, so this can be one cell and this is a different type of cell. But there is also another type of similar signaling where this signal cell is going to release this signal molecule, but it's going to bind actually onto a receptor on its own cell. So it's called autocrine signaling because it's going to stimulate itself. Examples of paracrine signaling are cancer cell growth, uh, growth factors and clotting factors. And um, another type of um, signaling we have is called synaptic signaling. And this is basically where a neuron is going to um, release a neurotransmitter um, into the synaptic cleft here, which is this region here, and it's gonna bind onto the target cell. Now these junctions here are called uh, synapses and the neurotransmitter or signaling molecules are stored in vesicles on this side of the neuron and they're going to be released into the synapse and then it's going to bind onto the receptors on the target cell once we have activation with an action potential. So this is synaptic signaling and something that you need to know about the first three types of signaling which we've just mentioned is that they're all very local um, forms of signaling. So the signal molecule doesn't have to travel very far or it doesn't have to travel much at all. Now the last type which we're going to talk about in this video is endocrine signaling or hormonal signaling and this is where the signal molecule has to travel much much further. So we have a specialized endocrine cell and they're going to release a signal molecule or a chemical and these are in this case called hormones example an example can be thyroid stimulating hormone and these hormones are going to be secreted out of the cell through the tissues and into a blood vessel it's going to travel through the bloodstream and from there it's going to 
move out of the blood vessel and bind to target cells. So the important thing that you need to know is this is a much greater distance that the signal molecule is traveling. Examples of this type of signaling can be with thyroid stimulating hormone and insulin.